Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we are at the AATS conference in Los Angeles, California, my hometown. Thrilled to be joined by Dr. Patrick McCarthy, who is the executive director of the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago. Dr. McCarthy, thanks for being here today. Hey Adam, good to be with you again. Yeah, and so Dr. McCarthy, you are here at the AATS and you're having a, a real special presentation. I saw in the program, it's called, How Low Can You Go? And if I remember right, it's all about tissue valve durability. Correct. Can you share with all the patients out there what this conversation is gonna be about in the presentation and what are the takeaways for them? So when we do mitral valve surgery, we frequently try to repair the valve, but sometimes we can't. Sometimes the valve's just so banged up, especially things like rheumatic fever, maybe an infection, things like that. So we have to replace it. And then we have to decide, is it a mechanical valve or is it a tissue valve, like a cow or a pig valve? And so with Steve Bowling and Matt Romano from the University of Michigan, my Northwestern team and I, we got together and we looked at that data, we presented it, and then Steve and I are having a debate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. <laughs> <laughs> and the debate is going to be simply what is right for which patient at which time in their life and how might that relate to the lifetime management of valve disease? Correct. Um, so what's most important for the patients to understand is that it's really their decision they have to live with that valve the rest of their life. We as surgeons can put in either a mechanical valve or a tissue valve, doesn't matter to us, it's the same. Um, the advantage to the mechanical valves, theoretically they never wear out, but you run a risk for a stroke and it's significant, it's 3% per year, so 10 years, 30%, 20 years, 60%, and to keep it that low, you have to be on a high dose of Coumadin, in a blood thinner, not a friendly drug. The tissue valves had been the concern about durability. Will they wear out? And so the idea was that, well, they wear out if you're young faster. And so how low can you go with that age? Can you put it in a 60 year old? Is that safe? A 50 year old or a 40 year old? And you know, what do you expect for durability? And these are really important questions. So the good news is that the study that we showed is that Durability looked much better than we've ever seen before for patients even in that 40, 50, 60 age range, uh, the patients that heretofore we had thought were young. So it kind of reassured us that patients with a tissue valve who are young in their 50s, 40s, that could still be a good choice for them. Ultimately, it's their decision. And so I've got to ask the follow-up question is, we're also hearing about some of these newer transcatheter devices used if a uh, yep. primary tissue valve could fail? Is that something that's gonna tie into your conversation? Absolutely, so the, the discussion that I used to have my patients would be 20 years ago, would be that, okay, someday the valve will wear out, you may need a second operation, open heart surgery to replace it. If you're 60 years old, then you might be 80 years old that second time, that may be pretty formidable. But now there's a way to replace a valve's transcatheter. We can go up through the vein on the leg, across the top, put one inside an old cow or pig valve. So when you look ahead 20 years, that won't be the same risk uh, for patients. That's going to be safer. And so Dr. McCarthy, the idea of planning for valvular disease throughout the lifetime, is that something that you do with every patient that you see is what might happen down the road? Yeah, we absolutely embrace that for patients with aortic valves, mitral valves, uh, valve repairs, replacements. Uh, we really want to think through with patients what is going to be the impact to their life to do this. They may get a mechanical valve, but every day the rest of their life they're on Coumadin. Alternatively, they may get one of those tissue valves and they may have to deal with it again. They have average luck. It may be 15 to 20 years or even longer, could be shorter but we kind of plan with them what's going to happen next so that they know, okay, this is going to be what I should be expecting. Well, it is great to hear that. Great to hear all the incredible things that you and Dr. Bowling are going to be sharing with the community of physicians. And thanks so much for everything that you've done for the patients in our community, all the research to stimulate the thinking. It's amazing what you've accomplished throughout your career. And I just want to take a moment and thank you for all your help. Thanks, Adam. And thanks for what you're doing for the patients as well. It really helps.
Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.